This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Carrie Douglas arrested to face court on March 16. Jamaica Labour Party Councillor Carrie Douglas was last night arrested and charged for assaulting and obstructing the police during an operation in Swallowfield, St. Andrew. The incident took place about 8.30 p.m., half an hour into the national curfew started at 8 p.m. when the police was responding to a gathering in the community. Douglas, as an elected official, is among the category of people exempt from the curfew. Commanding officer for the St. Andrew Central Police Division, Marlon Nesbeth, confirmed the details this morning. Nesbeth said Douglas allegedly used her vehicle to block the police in effecting the arrest of an individual from the gathering. Following the incident, she turned up at the stadium police where she was arrested. She was granted station bail and is scheduled to appear in court on March 16. In September 2020, prosecutors withdrew a charge against Douglas for breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act. The charges has stemmed from an incident in April in which it is alleged that she became boisterous when she was stopped by the police along Meadowbrook Avenue in St. Andrew. Douglas is a counselor for Trafalgar Division in the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. The news sought a response from Douglas, but she directed us to her attorney, Peter Champagny. I am yet to meet with Miss Douglas because, as you would appreciate, this incident just happened last night. I had a brief conversation with her and certain concerns have been raised in relation to protocol regarding curfews and so on, Champagny disclosed. He revealed that his client has said that she has not done anything to warrant her arrest. Champagny called the incident unfortunate. It is a matter that clearly would have to be played out in court. There are going to be challenges because it seems to me with all of what is happening, especially when you have persons in the political field that are as active as she appears to be and interfacing with the community and so on, sometimes these things may happen, he said. I'm not trying to come down one way or another, he continued, but it's just by way of making a comment and one wonders if, because her history in terms of her political history, you you may wonder if this is coincidence. I don't know, Champagny said. Douglas, a former member of the opposition, People's National Party, crossed the floor in the KSAMC to the JLP in February last year. Champagny said Douglas is to meet with him in the coming week. Prisoner bolts from Trelawney Family Court Trelawney police have launched a manhunt for a man who escaped from police custody on Thursday, February 25. Reports are that about 2.15 p.m., the man identified as Howard Fraser, a taxi operator of Zion, Martha Bray Trelawney, was in custody for breach of protection orders when he fled while he was awaiting trial at the Trelawney Family Court. A manhunt has since been launched. The police are appealing to anyone with information on the whereabouts of Howard Fraser to contact the Falmouth Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-954-3073, Police 119 Emergency Number, Crime Stop at 311, or the nearest police station. Meanwhile, the police are reminding members of the public that it is a criminal offense to harbor fugitives. Sentencing of mother and daughters for murder postponed until Tuesday. The lack of a criminal record forced the postponement of the sentencing of the mother and two daughters who recently pleaded guilty to the murder of 36-year-old Tamara Geddes of Reserved District, Falmouth, in the Trelawney Circuit Court on Friday. The deceased woman's sister, Nadine Geddes, a Trelawney farmer and her two daughters, one a minor, pleaded guilty to Tamara's killing when they appeared in the same court on February 8. Tamara was shot dead in her home by a gunman on Friday, June 19, 2020. Over months of extensive coordinated investigations across Trelawney, St. James, Westmoreland and the corporate area, detectives arrested and laid charges against the sister of the deceased and her two daughters, 21-year-old Shanice Ruddock 
and a 15-year-old, along with 24-year-old Brian Shelley, 23-year-old Rexon Knott, both of Norwood St. James and Owen Irwin, and 33-year-old Tashana Young, both of St. James addresses. Knott was freed when he appeared in court on February 8 due to insufficient evidence to mount a viable case against him in court. Reports from the Falmouth police were that on June 19 at about 8.30 p.m., Tamara Geddes was in her room with her daughter when a gunman entered the house, demanded money, and then shot the mother several times. The daughter escaped unhurt. The police were alerted and Tamara was taken to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. On Tuesday, July 14, Nadine Geddes along with both of her daughters and Owen Irvin were arrested and charged in connection with the murder of Tamara Geddes. The other accused the persons were subsequently arrested and charged by investigators. On Friday, the judge ruled that the matter be postponed until next Tuesday after it was disclosed that the antecedent for Ruddock was not present in court. Curfew imposed in sections of Capture Land, Young Street, Clarendon. A curfew has been imposed in sections of Capture Land, Young Street, Clarendon. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Friday, February 26, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Sunday, February 28. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. North along the Bustamante Main Road from the Lionel Town Entrance Vicinity Interval to Moorlands and Interval to the Perinskeen Farm. West along the Bustamante Drive from the entrance to the intersection that leads to the Lionel Town community. South along an imaginary line, thick vegetation from the end of Armstrong Drive. East along the Moorlands Main Road from the entrance to a right turn to the entrance of Capture Land. During the hours of the curfew, all persons within the boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized in writing by the ground commander. Four, including female, held after seizure of illegal gun, ammo, and more. Law enforcers assigned to the St. Andrew North Police Division arrested four persons, including a female, after an illegal firearm, ammunition, and other illicit items were seized on Sunrise Crescent in the parish on Wednesday, February 24. The following items were seized, a Browning 9mm pistol, 18 5.56 rounds of ammunition, 12 9mm rounds of ammunition, two 12-gauge cartridges, two Glock 9mm magazines, one pound of ganja, and one imitation bulletproof vest. Reports are that about 8 a.m., an operation was conducted at premises in the area during which the firearm and the ammunition were found in a hole in a wall. The ganja and the imitation bulletproof vest were found in a Bedroom. All four persons were subsequently arrested. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. Vehicle recovered. Alleged car thieves nabbed with aid of Jamaica Eye. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting that a joint effort between the Matilda's Corner Police and the Police Emergency Communications Center resulted in the recovery of a motor vehicle on Old Hope Road yesterday. Information received by the police is that, in mid-January, the owner of a 2015 Great Toyota Nowa motor vehicle contracted his vehicle to a man who required it for his company's fleet. Following six weeks without any communication from the man, the owner reported the matter to the Spaulding's police station in Manchester earlier yesterday. The matter was reportedly escalated to the PECC about 4.20 p.m. and a description of the vehicle given. Following the utilization of the Jamaica Eye technology, a team of officers assigned to the Matilda's Corner Police Station were alerted to two men traveling along Old Hope Road in a vehicle fitting the description. The vehicle was intercepted at 4.30 p.m. with the men aboard. The vehicle was recovered and the men were taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. Two men charged with shooting with intent. Two St. Anne men have been arrested and charged with shooting with intent following an incident in their community of Paritown on Tuesday, February 23. Charged are 22-year-old Meandre Vassal, otherwise called Dre, a carpenter, and 23-year-old Shaquille Boswell, otherwise called Mozzie, a mason. Reports are that about 1 a.m., the complainant was opening his gate when he saw the accused men, with whom he previously had an altercation, approaching him. One of the men 
man who was armed with a firearm opened gunfire at the complainant who managed to escape and report the incident to the police. Vassal and Boswell were later arrested and charged following an identification parade. Their court dates are being finalized. Firearm found in truck tire. The police say they have seized a firearm during an operation in High House, Old Harbor, St. Catherine yesterday. Reports from the Old Harbor Police are that, about 6.30 a.m., lawmen conducted an operation in the area where a premises was searched and one Glock pistol was found in a truck tire. No one was arrested in connection with the seizure. Investigations continue. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.